10 years ago, it was reported that Sony was developing an espionage thriller with Aunt May as the lead. They were making Aunt May the movie. At the time, a bunch of us thought that was the worst possible idea for a Spider-Man spinoff. But Sony never wanting to turn down an opportunity to develop a terrible idea for a Spider-Man spinoff kept searching for a worse idea. Yesterday, I saw Madam Web. So let's talk about it. While I'm talking, be sure to join me down below in the comments section. Let me know what did you think about Madam Web? Or are you sitting this one out and just want to watch reviews of people roasting the movie? Let me know down below in the comments section. Today's video is brought to you by Factor. Life is crazy busy for me right now. I've got three kids at three different schools. I care about my diet, but I don't have enough time to develop delicious and healthy meals. Factor is the perfect option if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easily like me. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. You get pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat in two minutes. No prep, no mess meals. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie plus, and more. I go with keto because because I'm a high protein, low carb kind of guy. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing six to 18 meals per week. Plus you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash Sean Chandler 50 and use code Sean Chandler 50 to get 50% off. That's code Sean Chandler 50 at factormeals.com slash Sean Chandler 50 to get 50% off. The link is down below in the description and let's get started. When it comes to Madam Web, there is an interesting idea for a movie buried inside of it. There is a potential fresh new take on the comic book movie genre where the film isn't a big spectacle action film, but it's a thriller about a woman who can see the future. Her ability to defeat evil isn't based off power and might, but knowledge. That's interesting. You have a lead character burdened with knowledge of the future. That was actually the setup for one of the best episodes of The X-Files, Clyde Bruckman's Final Repose. There's so many obvious what would you do scenarios and questions that pop up from that premise. Likewise, it's a great foundation to explore a bunch of philosophical and ethical questions when you have a premise like that. In fact, what's widely regarded as the best episode of the original Star Trek series, City on the Edge of Forever, is built on that ethical dilemma where our cast goes back in time, saves the life of a woman, but through that they realize her living causes catastrophic consequences in the future. Therefore, they have to make the choice, do we save this one woman or do we save the future? That's interesting, and that's the sort of idea you can explore with a character like Madame Webb with her powers. Even on just an action level, there's a bunch of great possibilities of how you can stage action sequences and explore the different ways that you would respond if you knew what was going to happen. Madame Webb is kind of built on a premise that could have done all of that. It could have been smart, character-based, thought-provoking, and have interesting action. Unfortunately, Sony isn't interested in any of those things. This movie isn't particularly interested in its lead character or her powers. It simply uses the lead character to tease Spider-Man and Spider-People. And to me, that's where this movie is built on an entirely faulty premise. The movie exists to tease more interesting projects, movies, and characters. It doesn't care about what's here, it cares about what we can tease over there. The movie is all about building out this shared Spider-Man universe and dropping Spider-Man Easter eggs. And because of that, the story and the characters are all underdeveloped. Our lead character is best friends with Ben Parker. Our villain wants to kill future spider people. Our hero is trying to save future spider people. It's all about teasing Spider-Man and Spider-Man related 
characters. They know that we like Spider-Man in his world, so it keeps teasing them, dangling things in front of us, but they don't deliver anything remotely satisfying when it comes to the Spider-People. Instead of telling a compelling Madam Web story, they simply used her to tease Spider-People. That's what this movie is, a tease, and a bad tease. I imagine there's probably some way they could have worked with this premise of using her to build out a team of spider women that would have worked, but this is not it. None of our lead characters are interesting. There's nothing compelling about them. There's nothing that we learn about one of them and we're like curious about it. We want to explore that character more. We just don't care about any of them. None of them are likable or charming. All of them are devoid of charisma. They are absolute charisma vacuums most of the time. There's no chemistry amongst the team. The banter all feels awkward and forced. And all of the performances are stiff, clunky, and awkward. And I don't know if that's because they were given terrible dialogue, if it was just awkward on set, if it was cut weird, or if they realized they were in a bad movie and they just didn't care. But none of it works. And then beyond that, the way the movie plays out, the way it does character development for everyone, is that they give us one character trait for the character, and then they tell us about their parents. Well, our lead character is socially awkward and her mom died while doing research. This girl over here likes to follow rules and her stepmom doesn't like her. This girl, her parents are rich and resent her and therefore she's rebellious. Like it's literally like that. It keeps giving us their trait and then the background about our parents. And they even do this with the villain. He's underdeveloped. Like all we know about him is that he grew up hard. So he lacks compassion and wants power. That's it. Like, no clue what his master plan is, what he actually wants to obtain, what his goal is, just that life is hard, therefore he wants power, and these girls might stop him from having power, therefore he wants to get them. What has he been up to the last 30 years? No clue. What's his master plan? No clue. In interviews, Dakota Johnson has said that the script radically changed from when she first signed on to what we're seeing on the big screen. And I wonder if there was a better version of the movie that was more character based, but the movie that they delivered constantly chooses to dedicate its runtime to Spider-Man Easter eggs instead of, instead of character development. Like there's literally a scene in this movie where we go to the Parker baby shower where there's a whole sequence where they play a game trying to guess the name of this baby boy that's on the way. Because it's Peter. See, it's Peter Parker. Spider-Man. Do you get it? Do you get it? Like they, they spend runtime on that just to like make the audience go, oh, I know who it is. I know the answer to the game that they're playing. And that's just such a goofy, silly way to use your runtime that has nothing to do with Madam Web. It doesn't do anything to build her out. It just reminds us Spider-Man's going to exist in this universe. And this is what happens when your goal isn't to tell great stories and your goal isn't to develop interesting characters. No, this is what happens when clueless executives are just desperately trying to milk every last drop out of an IP. And so they just see Madam Web as part of their Spider-Man collection. And so she's just an opportunity to reference Spider-Man over and over and over again in unbelievably unsatisfying ways. Beyond that, the movie is just filled with some messy as can be storytelling and plot points. Like there's a section in the movie where a lead character goes globetrotting to get an exposition dump of information the audience already has. They literally have all of the side characters and the villain sit at home for a week so she can learn what the audience learned in the first five minutes of the film. It feels like it was like, leftovers from a different draft of the script or that they reworked the movie in the editing bay and they forgot that they already told the audience this information and just left it in on accident. 
None of our characters feel like real humans. They're constantly making choices that ring hollow just to add tension and conflict because the writer couldn't come up with a good way to create a scenario where the villain could find our characters. So like the three teenage girls right after almost being killed decide not to be stay in, hidden, instead go in public, start flirting with boys and dancing on top of a table. Like, it makes no sense. It's not how humans behave when they've almost been killed and discover their secret powers in the universe, but it works to create a scenario where the villain can find them. The dialogue is clunky as can be. The line delivery is somehow even worse. And even the way that the movie tries to use Madame Webb's powers of seeing the future, it's like it never figures out how to do it in an interesting, fun way. So it's constantly disorienting. And by the time you get to the third act, they're just like, uh, she can just block things because she knows what's about to happen. So she's like, uh, duck. She pulls up a shield and they don't, there's nothing visual about it. She just knows the future so she can block everything. <laughs> And when you have an interesting power, you want to see them do something smart and interesting with it. But this is not a smart or interesting film, so of course they don't. I don't think this is the movie that anyone set out to make. I doubt anyone is particularly proud of the final product because it just feels like a series of compromises. And this is what happens when a committee of executives care about exploiting their IPs more than making an actually good movie. Remember to join me down below in the comment section. What did you think about Madam Web? Or are you sitting this one out? Just wanted to watch me roast the movie. Whatever it is, let me know down below in the comment section. Also, I have covered all of the Spider-Man movies extensively through reviews, through rankings. So if you want to hear me talk about actually good Spider-Man movies, check out that stuff somewhere around here. Unfortunately, when it comes to this movie, it's not even a fun version of bad. It's not so bad, it's good. It's so bad, it's boring. It's just competent enough, it's just slick enough that it makes for this very uninteresting version of bad. And the movie's not even designed to be particularly fun. I was pretty negative on the Marvels, but I would say the Marvels is superficially fun. Several of our lead performers are very charismatic and there's chemistry amongst our trio. Story doesn't make any sense but there's at least fun to be had. That's not even true here. It's bad and it's boring. You just have a bad idea for a film with a lazy story, underdeveloped characters, and stiff, dull performances. I can't even recommend this movie on a so bad it's good level. Just skip it. Overall, it's a D on the entertainment scale of four out of 10, and you can skip this movie. It's not even interesting enough to watch on streaming to see how it's bad. It's just dull as can be, teasing far more interesting characters and stories. Remember, if you're interested in checking out how to get quick and easy meals delivered right to your front door, the link for Factor is down below in the description, and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.